In the headlines, cattle traders in Gombe groan over Naira scarcity, say Mobile Banking Literacy Limited. President Buhari presides over Council of State meeting Naira scarcity, election and population census top agenda. Troops kill four bandits, recover arms and ammunition in Kaduna Forest. And on the foreign scene, Turkey Syria earthquake death toll tops 21,000 as rescue operations continue. Hello and welcome to Trust News Updates. I'm Dashan Husseina Usman. And now the news in detail. The recent scarcity of Naira notes and literacy gap in mobile banking is taking a toll on cattle traders in Gombe State. Some of the traders who spoke to Trust TV said the once lively cattle market, which operates on Thursdays and famed as one of the largest in northeastern part of the country, is now a shadow of itself. Ibrahim Ismail reports. It is business day for cattle marketers at the Gombe cattle market located in Tashandu Kwakzis. But business operators say the market used to be busier than it is today. They are attributing the drop in commercial activities to the scarcity of Naira notes and the fact that most of them have little or no understanding of the cashless policy. I will take my cattle back home because I don't want to receive transfer and don't have a bank account. Those who did are suffering to get their money. I also make a mobile banking transaction but I am yet to get the cash at hand which I want to use to buy an animal for breeding. A cow that I used to sell for 500,000 Naira is now 300,000 or 250,000 Naira. Instead of recording profits, I record some loss. It is a setback to my business. If you want to buy goods, no matter how little, they won't give you cash. They will prefer transfer. But we, the villagers, don't have access to bank accounts because we believe that banking system is for those who went to school and government elites, and also due to the poor literacy level in rural areas. Salaw Ali is the wakil in Sarkin Kaswa of the Gombe cattle market. According to him, they export about 120 trucks of cattle on a weekly basis, but however lamented that the figure has fallen to less than 50 due to the scarcity of Naira notes. The problem is the goods have two different prices. Those who have cash in hand and for those who are using mobile banking. There is price depreciation of up to 100,000 Naira per cow. Because of the scarcity of cash, many people are not coming to the market right now. According to some of the cattle marketers, prices of cattle at the market have dropped by at least 10%, forcing them to record in loss. The hope of these cattle dealers is for the relevant authorities in the banking sector to make cash available to ease their sufferings. From Gombe, Ibrahim Ismail reporting for Trust TV. Farmers of perishable items such as tomatoes, potatoes, cabbage, among others, are worried about the fall in the price of their commodities. The farmers who attributed the cause of the crash to the scarcity of the Naira notes called on the federal government to con reconsider its decision to ban the collection of old Naira notes to enable commercial banks release sufficient Naira notes to their customers. Adomusa completes the report. Farmers and dealers of vegetables in Jose the shortage of Naira notes has drastically brought down the prices of their commodities, adding that the situation is forcing them to sell the vegetable at a loss, considering how much they have invested in their farms. Some of the farmers who complain about the lack of storage facilities to preserve the vegetables said they had no choice than sell the commodities at whatever price they are offered. <laughs> We're in a terrible situation in this market. We were enjoying our tomato business when suddenly the federal government introduced the new Naira notes 
and asked us to return the old notes to the bank. People took the notes to the bank and hoped to get the new ones. But the banks have not been able to pay customers with the new ones. The business has been dealt a terrible blow. Tomatoes are perishing. Before now, we sold it 2005-2007. But due to poor availability of later, later uh, currency of the kind, we now sold at 900. And even the body, the person that bought the tomato as of now, we went to the POS looking for a cash because we don't have a cash and I will not allow them to take the, the tomatoes till another day because I don't know them. So now, when you look down the market entirely, there's no business. Nobody is buying and nobody is selling because people are not accepting transfer. We used to sell 100 kg of cabbage at the rate of 11,000 naira when buyers paid in cash. But today, the price has reduced to 6,000 naira. We are calling on the government to come to our aid because we are in a precarious situation. If what they are doing is for our own good, let them consider our situation. Many farmers and dealers of various perishable goods in just continue to count losses as the prices of commodities continue to fall by the day due to the shortage of Naira notes in the country. Ado Musa, Trust TV News, Joss. President Mohamed Buhari is currently presiding over the Council of State meeting to discuss issues of national concern revolving around the crisis generated by the Naira redesign policy, short fuel supply and insecurity ahead of the general elections. The hybrid meeting, which started in the morning, is being attended by former heads of state, General Yakubu Gawan, General Abdusalami Abubakar, and former President Goodluck Jonathan. Former President Olusha Gunabasanjo is joining the meeting virtually. Also joining online are 10 governors and three deputy governors, while six governors and one deputy governor is physically present. Two former Chief Justices of Nigeria, Alpha Balgori and Mahmoud Mohammed, are part of the meeting alongside Vice President Yemi Shibaja, President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawang. Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Gbajabi Amila, Attorney General, Minister of Justice, Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa and Head of Service of the Federation, Polasha Deyemiya Song, are present. Also present and awaiting their turn to brief the council are Chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Mahmoud Yakubu, Inspector General of Police, al Alibaba, and Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emefile. They're expected to update the council on preparations for the presidential and national assembly elections on February 25th and governorship and state houses of assembly polls on March 11. Presentations will also be made on the council to the council on cash crunch occasioned by the redesigning of the Naira and the state of security across the nation. Now, our correspondent Kendi Amodu joins us via telephone from the presidential villa. Good morning, uh, good afternoon, uh, Kendi Amodu. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, nice. Uh, thank you for having me. All right, so can you give us highlights on what the CBN governor briefed the Council of State, especially on the Naira scarcity? Well, I think everything uh, for now is out in the public space. What the CBN governor will try to assure the National Council of State is that the, the, there will be availability of the currency uh, for Nigerians to spend coming into the elections. Because you know that there will be need for cash to fund logistics, uh, especially during the elections. I think the CBN and the I and INEC have met on this, and they have agreed on how to fund INEC um, operations during the elections. And it is one of the things that the CBN governor will have to convince uh, during his briefing the National Council of State that everything is okay. Besides that, the INEC chairman is also going to is also going to brief, and uh, of course you know that they've already identified two major challenges. The first challenge being 
that of the uh, availability of currency, and the second, of course, being availability of fuel uh, to get uh, materials around. So uh, these are issues that are, are going to go forth before the National Council of State. You know, the National Council of State is made up of uh, former heads of state. The 36 state governors, uh, uh, former uh, justices of the, uh, so former chief justices of Nigeria. And so this is a, a, a wide uh, a forum in which uh, the you know, can brief and assure, and then okay. uh, assure the people to about uh, that things are ready for the election. All right. Now, Kane, the decision of the council is advisory. Now, should we be expecting resolutions that are likely to change the course of action with regards to the Naira redesign policy? Well, uh, yes, it's largely advisory, but uh, the president has to or uh, is bound to listen to the national, to advice of the National Council. Of you know that this is very important. We are going into the election, mm -hmm. and on the advice of the National Council of State, in two previous elections, uh, 2015, 2019, uh, elections were actually postponed. So if there is uh, advice from the National Council of State uh, that the Naira design uh, policy should be modified or should be postponed until after the election, the president is bound to take their advice. Yes, he might be not bound by law to obey uh, but in being the highest advisory body in the country is bound to listen to such a wide forum uh, of uh, voices, a very strong voice for that matter. All right. Well, thank you so much, Kende Amodu, for speaking to us on uh, Trust News updates this afternoon. All right. So uh, let's move on to more. Let's move on to more stories. Now, in politics, a presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Atiku Abubakar, has promised to reopen land borders and restore economic prosperity if elected into office come February 25th. Now, Atiku addressed thousands of party supporters at the Sunny Abacha Stadium in Kano, venue of the campaign rally. Trust TV correspondent Idris Jibrin was there and now reports. The PDP presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar and top other members of the party arrive in the Sani Abacha Stadium in Kanu to officially flag off the party's presidential campaign rally amid increasing concern over the problem of Naira redesign. According to the party's presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar, Nigeria has suffered a lot of economic hardship in the hand of the ruling Old Progressive Congress, a problem he promised to resolve if elected into office. Do you want the return of peace in Canada? Do you want the return of agricultural prosperity in Canada? Do you want the return of your industries in Canada? Now, do you want the borders open? The problem of the newly redesigned Naira notes, high cost of living among Nigerians, failure of education and health sectors are some of the problems the opposition People's Democratic Party promised to address if the party's candidate become the nation's president. They are planning to bring in monies, both old and new currency. In fact, they are even planning to bring fake currency to deceive you on election day. It is your money that they should have used to provide security, to provide infrastructure, to provide employment, and enabling the environment for businesses to grow. According to the People's Democratic Party, over the last eight years, the ruling All Progressive Congress has failed to fulfill its promises to Nigerians as poor masses have continued to become poorer. Let me reassure you that the better days of Kano will be back under Nigeria Tupo Rwanda. Kano used to be the place wherever, anywhere in the world, they are looking for better time, they will come to Kano. All the tiny companies, all the big factories that were here, they were all closed down. But today we have good news for you. Under Atiku Rubata, when I say economy, you say Atiku, economy.
The PDP presidential campaign rally in Kano was witnessed by thousands of party supporters across the 44 local government areas of the state. Idris Jubrin, Trust TV News, Kano. The presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress, Bola Tinubu, has promised to eliminate corruption and banditry if elected. Tinubu made the promise while addressing their supporters at the rally in Sokoto State on Thursday. He said the party is seeking re-election to enable it to clean up the, what is remaining of the mess it met in 2015 when it dislodged the PDP. President Muhammad Buhari, who was accompanied by the governors of uh, Kebi, Kaduna, Zamfara and Plateau states at the campaign, thanked the people of the state for coming out in their numbers to receive them and called for support for the presidential governorship and other candidates of the party. We promise we will work hard. We will eliminate corruption. We will drive away madness called kidnapping. We will do hard work. Clean Nigeria of rubbish. You, in the name of our party, in the name of Allah Almighty, we promise you better education, job opportunity, agricultural produce, and better markets, better markets for Nigeria that will make you happy, make your children happy, answer your prayers in the name of Allah. You're watching Trust News Update coming up after the break. Why sustaining immunization is necessary. Do stay with us. This is Trust TV, documenting the Nigerian story. At last, the elections are here. Let's turn out en masse on election day and vote Ashua Yubola Tinubu as president of Nigeria for a renewed hope and a better Nigeria. Vote APC, the party that shows a broom. Oh dear residents of the FCT, the dry season is here again, a time when the hamatan haze is intense and combustibles burn faster. So be responsible and take precautions. Stop bush burning. Stop the sale of gas in areas not approved for such purpose. Make sure you put off all electric appliances when leaving home or the office. Remember, fire is an obedient servant and a bad master and has caused colossal damage to lives and property in our dear territory. Support FCT Emergency Management Agency today to prevent fire disaster. For any emergencies in the FCT, call FEMA on the 112 toll free number or 080 57 FEMA, reducing disaster risk for a safe and happy FCT. Security has to be uh, an area they must work on. We are going to have our own country called Biafra. You are afraid to come out and move about, lest one hoodlum or the other will harm you. The people who have guns and the rest of them could be attacked. How about we, the, the you know, helpless uh, citizens? Our law office was attacked. The issue office was attacked. I haven't even seen where people are going to collect their trophies for voting. The IPOP run, they're not criminals, but they're just crying out for justice and help. We would deploy reasonably and strategically to make sure that we, we dismiss the activities of these bad elements who are causing problems in the world.
Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. You're still watching Trust News Update. Here's a recap of our top stories. We told you that President Buhari presides over a Council of State meeting, Naira scarcity, election and population census tops agenda. We also heard that cattle traders in Gombe grown over Naira scarcity, say mobile banking literacy limited. Moving to more stories, the troops of one division Nigerian army and air component of Operation World Punch have neutralized four bandits and captured arms and ammunition in an operation that lasted for 48 hours in Kaduna State. The Deputy Director, Army Public Relations, one division Nigerian army, Lieutenant Colonel Musa Yahaya, disclosed this through a statement issued on Thursday. Yahaya said that the operation was in continuation of the onslaught against banditry, kidnapping, terrorism and other criminal activities in the northwest. Yahaya disclosed that during the encounter, the troops engaged the criminals with heavy and superior firepower, capturing one AK-47 rifle, 20 rounds of 7.62mm special, six motorcycles and neutralized four bandits while others escaped with gunshot wounds. The general office, officer commanding one division, who is also the force commander Operation World Punch, Major General Tao Reed Lagbaja, expressed satisfaction with the conduct of the troops during the operation. He also appealed to the people of the state to report persons with gunshot wounds seeking medical attention. One person has been reportedly killed and property destroyed by hoodlums in some suburbs of Makudi in Benue State. It was gathered that trouble started in the North Bank suburb where the hoodlums burnt houses, killed animals and destroyed property. A source told Daily Trust reporter that what started as a disagreement between two young people, a male and female, on Thursday spread to the modern market area, causing traders and residents to close their shops and flee their homes. Police spokesperson in the state, Superintendent Catherine Anene, confirmed the death and said only one house was burnt. She added that peace has since returned to the area. Moving to health, the federal government says the success of the ongoing immunization and vaccination campaign against various deadly and vaccine-preventable diseases in rural communities depends on the level of support vaccine administrators enjoy from traditional leaders in various communities. In a meeting of the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency and the Northern Traditional Leaders Council on Primary Healthcare Service Delivery, the government added that it is preparing to receive and introduce malaria vaccines, the human papilloma virus vaccines, along with pre-existing vaccines to boost the nation's vaccination efforts. The report. The federal government, through the Ministry of Health and the National Primary Health Care Development Agency, during the meeting with the Northern Traditional Leaders Council on Primary Health Care Service Delivery, emphasized the need to strengthen the country's primary health care systems that serve the grassroots through advocacies and interventions from traditional leaders, especially as the country awaits the introduction of more vaccines for vaccine-preventable diseases. We know that vaccination is not something that people gladly take uh, because many do not see any reason why you want to give them medicine when they are not sick or you want to give them an injection where they are not complaining of anything. And it is the uh, persuasive effort of the tradi traditional institutions that makes acceptance of uh, vaccines uh, possible in this country. And I would like to humbly request that traditional leaders, please ask for your own primary health care centre in a ward. Every ward must have one. Everything can go on in there from this immunisation we are talking about now will just be a stone's throw away from population. And it's easier for them to, not only to get the immunisation, but for the immunisation to be monitored, can be monitored more closely. The Emir of Aragungung, Sumaila Mera, speaking on behalf of the Sultan of Sokotosa, Ad Abubakar III, says traditional leaders will continue to encourage their subordinates to take advantage of the primary health care systems. We assure you we will continue to, hold, to do our best 
to ensure that able husband and able mother is mobilized and motivated to demand for PhD services, especially vaccines, for their children and family. In line with reducing the spread of the variant polioviruses to zero and eradicating the CVPV2, the NPACDA charged the traditional leaders to strengthen their communities through further engagement. Yes, we've made progress in the last five years, but that progress is not enough to make sure that we eradicate these vaccine-preventable diseases. This is why your voice, which carries so much power in our communities, is very, very important so that as we carry out the campaigns, we are able to ensure that community members take their kids for vaccination in the health facilities. The presence of traditional leaders at the meeting, according to stakeholders, is a clear signal that the traditional institution accepts vaccines as safe, potent and available free of charge for all members of their communities. Aisha Salihu, Trust TV News, Abuja. And finally, on the international scene, nearly 100 hours after a massive earthquake hit Turkey and Syria, killing more than 21,000 people in the world's deadliest of such disaster since 2010, rescuers continued to search debris on Friday for survivors. Officials and medics say 18,342 people had died in Turkey and 3,377 in Syria from Monday's successive earthquakes, bringing the confirmed total to 21,719. Hopes of finding more survivors are rapidly fading as rescuers continue to search through the rubble with freezing conditions now threatening the lives of thousands of survivors left without food or shelter. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has called the quakes the disaster of the century, acknowledging shortcomings after criticisms of his government's response. And with that, we've come to the end of Trust News Update. Don't forget to follow us across all our social media platforms. I'm Darshan Hussein Usman. Thanks for watching.